So hello everyone, and thank you for joining the, um, our event. Uh, today we have with us uh, Dan and Dragos from uh, Deloitte, Romania, who have prepared a very interesting topic for us. And I give the floor to, to Dan and Dragos. Yeah, hello, hello everyone, and uh, nice, uh, nice to have uh, an audience for, for our presentation. Uh, today's session will be regarding uh, command and control beacons through through the cloud. Um, I will try right now to to share my screen and hopefully it will it will work. Uh, I think I think it's uh, it's it's running. Yeah. So uh, yes, uh, thank you again for for coming. This will be our session for for today. Um, a short. A short introduction from from our site, and uh, uh, I am uh, Dan uh, Dan Marin from from Deloitte. I am working in Deloitte for almost seven years right now, uh, with in the cybersecurity cybersecurity department. Uh, before that, I was a developer and system administrator. I have a master's degree in information security. I have a lot of certifications uh, within this field. Uh, Dragos also has a lot of a lot of them, and we did not manage to uh, present them all in this uh, in this slide. Uh, these are uh, only a few of them, <laughs> which have the the logo on uh, on on this slide. Uh, we both uh, participated in many many projects, mostly in in banking projects, but also in healthcare, automotive, and other miscellaneous uh, miscellaneous uh, miscellaneous projects. Uh, Right now, I'll let, I'll let Dragos to also uh, introduce himself because I don't want to uh, to keep uh, to 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 gain his his glory. So, Dragos, if you <laughs> like to say a few words. Thanks, Dan. Uh, so I'm Dragos. Uh, I have five years in uh, in Deloitte, over twelve ex years experience in uh, in security field. Started as a web developer. And when I saw that uh, a lot of my websites uh, were hacked, I started to be more curious uh, about uh, cybersecurity and uh, made the first uh, steps, of course, uh, learning about uh, web security and try to be um, up to date with uh, all the trends. So I also started like, four years ago uh, to, to discover the red team operations field and starting to gain a lot of knowledge. Uh, and yeah, here I am uh, running uh, with, uh, with Dan and also with my colleagues from uh, Deloitte, a lot of uh, projects uh, in red team. I'll pass the floor to, to Dan to, to continue the, the presentation. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Dragos, for, for this uh, this introduction. Uh, today's on today's agenda, the, we will try to to cover the the the, the field of uh, command and control beacons, uh, and mostly we will try to focus on how can we, from a red team perspective, how can we uh, be more stealthy and use all the new. Uh, cloud infrastructures and cloud providers out there in order to, to leverage leverage this thing. So uh, in the first chapter, we'll talk a little bit about the command and control infrastructure, how it was before, how it is now. Uh, why is the cloud important for red teaming? And basically, uh, we will talk a little bit about uh, the, the Azure uh, the uh, the Azure infrastructure because this is like a, a, a very small proof of concept that we've uh, tried to to put together. Uh, and finally, we will talk about uh, how we can bypass EDR solutions using uh, these trusted cloud uh, trusted cloud platforms. Um, this this on on the screen right now you can see a very a uh, simple illustration of how a command and control center works. And basically, um, there is a command and control server. Uh, in this case, we are uh, proposing the Cobalt Strike server, which is our main uh, uh, main command and control 
uh, server that we use in our in our engagements. There are many others, but this this is the main one, which is very um, expandable, extendable. That has many plugins. It's very widely known in the in the community. And uh, leveraging this uh, this extensibility, we will uh, in the future and in in the rest of the presentation, we'll tell you about how we can. Uh, mel make it more more stealthier. So this is it about the, the Cobalt Strike server. Basically, um, the simplest way to deploy a, a command and control is just have a public IP address uh, mapped to the to the Cobalt Strike server, and in some way or form uh, compromise some other uh, other computers, hosts, victims, whatever whatever you may like to call them. But uh, this this is a very tricky situation because if this is your um, deployment as a, as a red team, you have a single point of failure, and basically uh, the communication that the blue team sees uh, in the in the targeted organization is basically the communication from their internal network to the internet and uh, the the Cobalt Strike server, and it, this. <clears throat> This is very, very easily easily spotable, and it's very, very easy to uh, to deny access to and basically put down put down the communication. Uh, this is why this this kind of approach is is the wrong approach because uh, having only one one line of communication with you and uh, the the target that you are uh, trying to to compromise. It's uh, it's not that easily um, expand uh, expandable, let's say, uh, uh, because uh, not only you can see the the um, uh, the communication with the clients, but the blue team also, as I mentioned before, can easily spot your your communication and uh, uh, deny deny the access to to those to those IP. To the IP targets uh, of the of the Cobalt Strike uh, server. Uh, then, what what is the cloud? What it what it is the cloud? Uh, the cloud has been around for for many years. Uh, I think from the beginning of the internet, uh, that was the cloud because uh, if you can uh, send an email or uh, read the read the document which is not on your computer, that is the cloud. Uh, what other services are? There are streaming services. When you watch a movie, you are accessing the cloud. When you're listening to music, you are also accessing the cloud. When you are trying to shop for something, that's also the cloud because they are not stored in or on your computer. Uh, this is a very a holistic approach in trying to say that everything is cloud, but basically what is not running on your computer, that is a cloud because you don't know where, where it's running from. It's just uh, trying to to deliver you data. Um, in in the previous in, in the previous slides, we were we were talking about the cloud and the services that they are provided that that they provide us. But how does the cloud are, is being seen from a developer's perspective? The, the developers see the cloud differently. They see the cloud as uh, opportunities to develop, and they see providers. Um, one and the biggest one, I think, uh, I'm not, I have not uh, dug into the into the numbers, but I think the biggest one is AWS, which has a lot of lot of um, services and platforms which can which can help uh, business grow uh, relatively fast, relatively fast. Another one is the the Google platform, my which is very very similar in in. Uh, or service offerings. Uh, uh, another one which is very, uh, it, which is very uh, extended through through all organization is the Asia platform from Microsoft because as we uh, already know, all the services critical for the day to day work of the. Um, of the business is run in, in Asia from email, Teams, SharePoint, Excel Online, and, and all the others, all the other uh, services. 
Another one which is very new to the market from my perspective is the Oracle Cloud. They have joined uh, relatively late the the cloud party, but uh, I see that they are trying very uh, very hard to to have a uh, quite of uh, market share from the big big three already mentioned. Um, so we talked about the cloud, but what why is that that they are very very important? What what server services are there in in the cloud? So we will start from the very smallest part in which we think about the cloud. We think about the cloud as virtual machines that uh, are not managed by us on, on premises uh, that we can uh, ac access and deploy all sorts, all sorts of things on them. Uh, in, in all the previous uh, cloud providers that uh, I've mentioned, we can have pre-built machines, we can have custom ones, uh, and all of this all of these uh, machines can be really, really fast deployed um, and put up to speed in order to deploy the, the services and the applications or if you want uh, any, anything anything that you can you can think of. And you will see in the, in the next slides what have we thought about the, this virtual virtual machines. Another very interesting service is the is the storage services. That can be used for a lot of things. It can be used for backup. It can be used as transactional data. You can store very different formats: JSON, XML, clear text, CSV, and so on. And it's easy to develop and integrate in every every application that you can imagine. So this will be also a very interesting topic from the offensive perspective uh, of the of the IT IT community. Another. Another one is the the serverless functions of the of the cloud infrastructure that you can run any code without spinning up a VM. This greatly increases the time that you can um, run your run your run your code and uh, create a proof of concept or anything anything you can imagine. It's easily integratable into anything that you have already done and it's already built. Uh, you can vastly increase the, the computing power and it's very relatively easy easy to deploy if you have skilled uh, skilled personnel at your uh, disposal. The last part uh, it's um, from my perspective the, the biggest one. I don't know if uh, if all of them provide uh, such uh, such uh, um, such a solution but from, Full applic full solutions. I'm referring here that uh, you can start your business from the ground up without having needed uh, have have without having a need for an internal uh, on premises uh, hardware uh, and server room. Basically, you only need a subscription, and here you can deploy all all of your applications. You can create uh, the the email addresses. You can create the the SharePoint you can have deployed you can deploy your ERP solutions and any 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 other thing that uh, that you can imagine. Uh, this 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 the last part with the full solution is it's very interesting interesting for us because if you can if you can remember the uh, the previous slide when we have talked about the classical command and control solution, uh, the Cobalt Strike server spoke with uh, with the compromised host directly via a public uh, public IP IP address, which is bad, as we have uh, a little bit spoken uh, previously. Uh, how does the cloud interfere with this uh, with this problem from the retaining perspective? Well, basically, it's like like a buffer in which uh, the um, the compromised hosts via internet do not talk directly to the to the Cobalt Strike server, but use the the Microsoft uh, Microsoft Cloud as a proxy. Uh, and in this this presentation, I'm talking the about Microsoft because this is what we have done as a proof of concept in um, in the last month, I think, for for a client of ours, and it was a, a very great success. So basically, the cloud provides us with uh, with a buffer, and um, 
uh, it's very easy for for a red team red team operator to uh, mix within legitimate traffic that is generated from from the organization. Uh, previously, when the the blue team saw the the communication between the infected clients and the the Cobalt Strike server, now uh, if they try to inspect the traffic coming out of their network, they will see only only leg legitimate traffic that is coming and going to the the Microsoft Cloud, uh, which is very very hard for for them to uh, to filter or to try to to deny access to. Basically, this is this is a, a screen capture of some some traffic that was generated for from from our custom program, our Cobalt Strike Beacon. Uh, it is only pure HTTPS traffic uh, from the internal host to the uh, to an trusted Microsoft IP address, and basically this this address um, it's it's very hard to to blacklist because if you blacklist uh, Microsoft address, all sorts of things will go wrong. Uh, some of of the communication may go down. You cannot access Skype or Teams or uh, any other any other services critical to your uh, to your uh, business, but let's say you have uh, an EDR solution in, in implemented in in your organization. For sure, that that EDR solution with uh, the packet inspection capabilities can uh, flag out the malicious communication. Well, this is this is a, a packet trace from a uh, very, very well-known EDR solution. Uh, this is from, uh, as you can see in the date, from uh, 30th of November, uh, from one of our engagements. And this, this EDR solution, not only that uh, he did not block the, the communication, he, it, it uh, marked the, uh, our beacon traffic as legitimate VoIP uh void packet uh activity so basically as as we as i said uh, in the beginning uh this kind of traffic with uh legitimate and trusted sites within within the cloud that you use very often can be masked to, to transport malicious uh, beacon beacon activities um how how does this this uh, cover channel uh, via the Microsoft Cloud uh, work? How 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 does the implant uh, try to evade all the all the detections and endpoint security and EDR solutions and so on? Basically, uh, this is a proprietary solution developed by uh, by the Deloitte uh, Cyber Risk Services. It has custom code it is in in continuous deploy de development uh, it has multiple uh, multiple supported channels that we'll speak a little bit uh, uh, in the next slides uh, we had uh, many many deals of success with this with this implant we have not been detected so far in any of our uh, any of our, any of our engagements um, we support many many communication channels. Like, uh, if we notice that uh, the organization is heavily dependent on the the Git public Git repositories, we can use uh, a Git uh, repository in order to to have the the communication. Uh, the teams the teams uh, the teams channel is one of uh, the 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 greatest channels that we we've, we've managed to to have a lot of success with uh, as mentioned earlier um, we also have uh, the uh, a channel communicating via wordpress this is this is a very edge case scenario in which uh, say uh, the the red team managed to compromise a um, portal or something that is hosted on uh, uh, on wordpress Basically, then the the red team can deploy um, a custom a custom plugin, and through it 
we uh, they or we can can compromise all the rest of the infrastructure and all the traffic that is generated uh, it's very under the radar as the communication is with the legitimate own wordpress wordpress portal uh, some some other uh, communication channels are the smb shares and the sql server uh, channels these are mainly used as um, um, uh, lateral movement uh, and uh, trying to bypass uh, network restrictions as if one server is compromised and is, is not a proxy or a router or anything, uh, but it has uh, multiple interfaces that can speak with other parts of the network that can be can be used as a proxy uh, if it is uh, if it is compromised. Um, the the very the most difficult part in in this one is the is the delivery uh, the delivery that can be done as uh, as a phishing attack or some uh, watering hole attack or I don't know many many other uh, delivery solutions but with with uh, the last uh, improvements in the Microsoft Windows operating system we see that this can be a very very difficult problem to overcome as as a red teaming uh, team uh, the the most difficult part of for us was uh, the bypassing of the mark of the web uh, i don't know how to say it the mark of the web tag that is put on all uh, binaries that are downloaded from from the web even if uh, we we did manage to embed them in the custom tenant in in our uh, uh, microsoft uh, teams channel they also have the mark of the web uh, flag on on them and they did not did not run uh, as easily as we we thought but as as for the delivery for sure we have some some other uh, very uh, interesting interesting ideas and i will let dragos here speak about uh, the many opportunities that we have using the this uh, the, the phishing attacks and the delivery of, of the payloads so dragos yes yes uh so regarding this part of the delivery uh, we are, let's say, using traditional tools like GoFish or uh, Evil Genix, uh, which are most common in uh, trying to to serve phishing mail emails. But um, since those are like uh, open source tools, we are trying to reverse engineer them to understand where uh, those tools are, um, let's say, doing some fingerprints some uh, adding some tags or something which can be triggered by an edr or um, uh, defense mechanism uh, to 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 block this uh, kind of phishing attacks so we are reversing engineering them we are trying to remove them or we are trying to put some tags which are uh, uh, let's say our watermark for them um in order to deliver we are not just uh, sending the the executables uh, as attachments yeah we are trying to 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 create uh, the social engineering part uh, as good as possible in order to make the the target to click uh, on some links and the uh, the executable should be delivered through that uh, website um that's why uh, than told about WordPress because we are trying to create some uh, our own domains. Uh, we are building the um, those websites and try to to put their uh, our beacon uh, through that uh, that payload, which uh, sometimes are very well trained in order to bypass some proxies because uh, if the domain has enough authority uh, and the reputation is good. Uh, the traffic won't be blocked, so it it should be considered like a normal uh, website, just for let's say uh, news. 
Um, other uh, kind of techniques are HTTP smuggling. Yeah, if you are visiting like websites and suddenly after five seconds, you will get a website, uh, sorry, uh, an executable because you were attention that you will gonna get that uh, after you will open the, the URL that we sent you. Uh, then should be fine. You won't need to to click on uh, some other, let's say, uh, link into the the phishing page. Yeah, uh, those are let's say some mechanisms that we we try to improve um uh, on a daily basis because like uh the let's say unconventional attackers or the APTs are trying to invest in knowledge and trying to discover new methods. We are also doing the same thing. We are trying to, to apply this kind of techniques and probably to make them better uh, in order to, to bypass any restrictions or EDRs or other kind of uh, defense mechanisms. So then uh, I'll leave the floor to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dragos, for, for your input. Um, this this Dragos talked about the, the delivery part. Uh, the next the next one, the, the persistence uh, that we are trying to achieve using using this uh, these techniques, it, it is not um, let's say not very relevant to to the communication type and and uh, the the custom code that is put in place basically for for the persistence you have to use uh, very classical methods like uh, registry updates or scheduled tasks or uh, hijacking some legitimate um, processes uh, dll hijacking and, and so on uh, but using uh, using this this method for sure uh, you will have the opportunity and the the, the impact that you that you would like uh with, with these four four uh, topics i think we have covered the whole of the uh attack chain from from how we can create an implant how it can communicate how you can deliver it and how to to persist in in the in the targets network but let's let's talk a little bit about how how this can all be possible and how how did we do it basically um the 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 team's uh, cover channel started as um a solution that we tried to uh, to mimic as we saw that uh, the the cobalt stride creator uh, i think it's rafael Maj or something this is his his name he um presented a few years ago how can how can anybody extend the the beacons capability in order to communicate via anything uh, anything out there uh, and this was a game changer for us because uh, we did not have to rely on uh, some redirectors or proxies within within the the internet or trying to buy it a very very huge amount of domains or or uh, having access to various and a very large number of, of ip addresses and uh, we thought that we could leverage the whole whole cloud itself in order to uh, to communicate and gain access to other other networks and as i said this uh, this started as a small project that eventually uh, grew and now it's almost almost in beta let's say because uh, it still has some some development work needed but uh, it is it is ready for for deployment and we have successfully um, uh, compromised some clients that were eager to see how how this uh, this attack this attack could work and basically the the solution is uh, is made up of two uh, two parts the the server and the client part the client is the uh, is the implant itself that the, the the client needs to needs to run and the server is the intermediate part 
of the of the software that communicates with with the Cobalt Strike server and with the the cloud uh, itself. For for the team's uh, coverage channel, we we have used the the team's toolkit provided by by Microsoft in order to create a chatbot uh, that we have deployed uh, into our own our own tenant. And basically, this chatbot only stores and relays the commands and communication received from either side of the of the tunnel, uh, from the Cobalt Strike server or from the or from the um, uh, beacon itself. Uh, we are not uh, Azure or cloud uh, developers, but with uh, with a few trial and error approaches we have managed to deploy and create and deploy this this solution in less than two weeks uh hope fortunately for us the uh, the visual studio code in ide that is provided by microsoft uh, greatly helped us in order to pack and deploy uh the um, the, the the chatbot uh, next, uh, after the after the chatbot uh, is uh, is deployed, we can manage it through the Azure uh, web interface. We can see its its ID, the subscription, where is uh, listening on uh, this on on the screen right now. You can see the the public uh, the public public URL for one of our. Uh, one of our uh, beacons in in the past. Uh, this this was used uh, as presented previously uh, and bypassed the the ADR solution. Um, also, when when we did deploy this one, the the blue team not only that they did not know that we have managed to run a successful Cobalt Strike uh, beacon. They also did not know where uh, where we did we point to, and when we said that we we pointed to the to the Asia websites uh, domain, there were they they were very very impressed as this was a very novel te technique for them, uh, for us also because uh, we have we have spent a lot of time uh, in order to trying to figure out how we can leverage uh, the day to day tools that. Are being used in the in the organization to uh, to bypass and uh, try to stay under the radar uh, as as a red teaming red teaming operations. After the uh, this all setup is is made, uh, this is our uh, uh, command uh, command window of the external C2 server, basically. We can see if any beacons uh, come to us, and we can see that they are trying to read the stager. We can send the stagers to them. This is only uh, an eye candy uh, window, but it's very useful for us in order to to see if uh, we have uh, we have um, have successfully fished somebody before the the beacon appears in in the Cobalt Strike uh, infrastructure. Um uh this is this is all from from our side as before before the QA session starts. Uh I will try to uh to also to to talk a little bit about what is the, the future work uh for this kind of communication. Basically, we will try to leverage all the other providers that we have spoken before, like the, the AWS serverless functions, they are a very good candidate for us to uh, to try to proxy the, the traffic to, but this is something that uh, that is very dependent on the type of workload that the, the client is, uh, is used to. If he doesn't use AWS that much, this will be a clear indicator that something is going wrong uh, when suddenly uh, all this traffic to AWS is coming out of the network. But again, this should be uh, should be targeted before uh, deploying deploying the beacon. Uh, 
uh, also with uh, with S3 buckets and uh, uh, on, online cloud databases. This is something that we are trying to uh, trying to leverage in order to hide our uh, our Cobalt Strike uh, Cobalt Strike beacon. Um, and and I think that's it uh, for sure. In the future, will be we will have many many more ideas. But for now, uh, I hope that you have enjoyed uh, our small small presentation. And uh, if there are any 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 questions, I will happily try to answer them. Maybe I do not have all the answers. Thank you very much for for the presentation and for the the pra practical insights into your work and uh, how things um, tie together. Uh, so now we open up the floor for questions. Uh, please either write in the chat or raise your hand and um, I will unmute you. Okay. Um, now until we, we are waiting for uh, for questions, maybe I have one. Um, in terms of the, um, let's say, requirements, requests from clients, um, what did you see more being requested? More testing the delivery side of things? So uh, the part uh, referring to passing through the security technology and reaching the, the end users uh, or the communication part to see if there are detection mechanisms for the, the communication. Yeah, so basically in in uh, in the last, I think two or three of these type, type of engagements, the client asked us to, to bypass their network security, uh, thinking about uh, that uh, the their employees for sure they will click on something or uh, run some sketchy executable and so on and they were trying to find out if they can spot us in uh, in uh, their uh, use day to day communication. So in order to answer your question, is the second is the second one. The, all the, the clients for in in this part. They are trying to find out if they can spot us after post post infection. Let's say. Okay, super. Uh, I see Graciela also has her hand up. Yes. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hi, Larissa. Hi, Dragos. Good to see you. Hi, Dan. Uh, nice to meet you. Hi, Graciela. Um, I don't feel I'm able to, to address any technical question. I'm happy that uh, in, in this universe, there are some technical people who can run and who can manage those kinds of projects. I'm very happy with this. However, thinking from, you know, thinking from above, um, I would be curious uh, because you mentioned um, as an example, you know, you can build a different scenarios based on some weaknesses of the organization. For example, um, exploit, exploiting the phishing piece. In your opinion, the campaigns, the awareness campaigns run, run by organizations are in any way effective? Because there are, I, I, I found different opinions on this and the latest one is uh, the organization should not put pressure on, on users, should put more effort on you know, configurations and uh, technical aspects of uh, the devices, for example. Would okay. you have an opinion on are they effective or? Yes, oh, okay. Uh, it's it's a very, very nice question. And from my opinion, for sure, it has a positive impact. Although uh, if the organization says that okay, uh, we will try to invest more in the technology and trying to block all sorts of attacks. Many, many um, issues that have come in in the past in the past years were human related. So basically, uh, we are talking about here about very, very large companies that have been uh, infiltrated and afterwards uh, as we have seen them in the news. And the sole cor corporate was, uh, a user clicking on a link or downloading some some file. So basically, uh, from from my perspective, if you are able to 
to create uh, phishing campaigns that are very reasonable and uh, not not obvious phishing campaigns internally. I I, I mean. Uh, at that that the users can learn from for sure you can you can go ahead with this with this approach because this you you have nothing to lose in the end you have a phishing campaign that you have uh, in the end uh, the results maybe it's a full uh, uh, a full uh, blunt that did not happen anything but also you did not uh, lose anything basically you have taught your your employees that okay you have to watch out for for this kind of uh, phishing attacks so in my opinion uh, it's very uh, the, the, the this kind of awareness test trainings are very very useful thank you very much i like uh, yeah. uh, reasonable that the word reasonable i like it <laughs> I would also want to to add something regarding um, this part of awareness. So uh, speaking about phishing campaigns, there are two scenarios. Yeah, one where the the clients uh, need, uh, let's say, awareness exercises. So they are uh, just looking for, I don't know, how many people clicked uh, on some specific links, how many downloaded some specific files, and phishing from the perspective of uh, let's say an advanced attack so uh, in this guy in this case we are quite targeting some high level accounts which have some high privileges into the company uh, where of course we can have some nice results of this kind of exercise we are targeting them because we know that they also have, uh, let's say, a well security posture, a mature level. They have all the vendors around them in terms of, let's say, defensive hardware, EDRs, XDRs, a lot of three-letter equipments. But uh, when we are talking about how uh, those equipments are configured, we know that some of them can be easily bypassed and we somehow try to, to find a way how to chain this kind of attacks. Yeah, uh, in case, I don't know, we know that uh, they are using, let's say Microsoft, because it's uh, something that we, we, we identify quite usually. It's not easy to bypass, let's say Microsoft solutions, but there are some, dummy ways to bypass them to evade them uh and after that you will get a nice beacon uh but when you are trying to to obtain to exfiltrate the data from the client computer you will understand that there are other mechanisms that you need to bypass so yeah it's uh it depends on this kind of uh, of scenarios that our clients are interested in uh, we have um, a sort of uh, of a service which is uh, quite focused on phishing, but it's more for um, for awareness. Yeah, when uh, clients um, want to just want to understand which are the numbers, how many colleagues need to to understand uh, this kind of uh, let's say awareness exercises, and those who have a good um, maturity posture and which are more interested in, uh, let's say, defining additional barriers or just refining a little bit their configurations to to understand uh, how a real attacker uh, can do his work. Thank you, Dragos. I will have a guilty pleasure to run a, a campaign targeting C-level individuals. Have you? had such a project uh, Are there outside <laughs> any requirement in this regard that that would mean for me um, a very high maturity level of an organization being aware that actually the targets are the ones who are very high with with a high authority or high privileged access which is totally correct at the first side of course Is anybody requesting such a such a question or initiating such a such project? 
yes, they are interested in, uh, in let's say, in sea level. They are highly monitoring this kind of uh, of personnel. Uh, sometimes, sometimes, not. Those are, let's say, from sea level. They are just some normal operators who just do their, uh, let's say, uh, daily jobs, daily tasks, uh, moving, uh, let's say, moving money from an account to another uh, without two factor or three factor or let's say four eyes mechanism. So it's, it's quite easy to, to get into the, this kind of systems. But we, we, we had some situations where uh, all the systems were in uh, in place and uh, it was very hard to play with the uh, to play that uh, that people yeah uh, so if there are some let's say additional social engineering stuff that needs to be done in order to to make that guy performing another click yeah it's <laughs> it's something bad for us <laughs> But uh, just to answer your your question, yeah, we do this kind of exercises and we are also uh, discussing with the clients in order to target the the real the real targets. Yeah, like let's say like Russians, Chinese, or other uh, uh, well known attackers do. Thank you very much. Okay. Super. Thank you. Great, uh, great discussion. Uh, if anyone else has any questions, you can raise your hand or you can write in the chat. We'll, we'll wait a couple of, uh, of more minutes. Um, in the meantime, maybe I have a question to um, see your feedback on this. Um, do you also have maybe some recommendation for countermeasures, maybe to uh, block the attack at a certain point in time through the cyber kill chain. Some hints. Uh, yeah, this this is a very very nice uh, nice nice question. Uh, we have really thought about this one because this is a question that we was asked uh, that that was asked uh, by a by a client. Um, basically. If if you are trying to to stop this kind of this kind of attack, mainly we we are speaking here about only the the communication channel because uh, otherwise we are fully fully under the radar, not not doing anything anything malicious at all in the mean in, in the first time. We're trying to to wait and see if uh, if we can put our hands on on something. Um, in in the first stage of the the attack we do not have any any kind of recommendation other other than the uh, the security awareness not to click or download anything from from the web uh, afterwards if if the executable is is ran executable word document what what you want to call it uh, because we can package this in in many other formats uh, afterwards for sure you have to have in place uh, a very tight security monitoring and a network team in order to see uh, abnormal abnormal traffic coming from 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 a workstation uh, even even if uh, it is going to legitimate legitimate websites legitimate sources and and so on if there is a spike let's say at uh, closing hours or early in the morning or something it's behavioral behavioral uh, analytics that you are trying to to find out, uh, and because in honestly speaking, uh, after you you as a victim have run the the, the payload, we can do all sorts of uh, kung fu magic in order to to unhook the EDR, not uh, uh, not uh, trigger any alerts in the Windows uh, logging system. Uh, we can erase the the local files and and so on. So basically, uh, in order to catch this kind of activity, you have to uh, to have a very very uh, behavioral monitoring monitoring team. Mm -hmm. Okay, super. Thank you. So 
focus more on the traffic patterns and not on the end device let's say yeah yeah okay, yeah but but for sure you have to to have also the devices very very secure because uh, it it is kind of um difficult let's say with like i said previously in the presentation with the latest versions of windows with all those uh, tags and mark of the web and uh, to a smart screen pop-ups and so on it's very difficult for us to to get the the target to click on something and actually run it but uh, if they run it then yeah you should have some network monitoring in place that uh, you can detect this abnormal traffic mm -hmm. okay super many thanks um now, if there are no other questions, if you have some uh, final words for us, and then we can conclude the event. Uh, yeah, uh, from from uh, from my side, uh, I'm very very happy that we have uh, we had uh, some some questions at the end. Uh, hopefully, our presentation uh, did bring some some insights and some new perspective into how. Uh, how can a network be compromised using trusted services? And uh, yeah, I'm watching right now that we have uh, a very nice audience. So thank you, thank you guys for pairing with us uh, for uh, for this this time and listening to our uh, to our insights and technical gibberish. Let's say. <laughs> Thank you also. Thank you. Very interesting presentation and very useful, let's say. Okay, so this concludes our event for today. Thank you for your participation. Uh, the registration, the recording will, uh, will be available um, on uh, YouTube. And um, Hope to see you soon for our next event. And special thanks to Dan and Dragos for the very interesting presentation. Thank you so much. And thank also you. thank you for, uh, for the invitation. Thank you. And have a nice evening. Bye. Bye. Have a good bye. Bye. Bye.